Okay, in this video we are going to talk about using the quadratic formula to solve trig equations, and these can get uh, pretty messy, so let's, let's dive in and see what's going to happen. So we have 2 sine squared of 3x minus 5 sine of 3x minus 2 equals 0. Um, I don't really like to factor when there's trig functions involved, so what I like to do is make a u substitution. So I'm going to say let u equal sine of 3x. And that's going to transform it into a pretty typical quadratic. So we get 2u squared minus 5u minus 2 equals 0. Um, I look at that and I know that I can't factor that. So now I'm going to use quadratic formula. So uh, it's going to be u is equal to, and then it's the opposite of b, so that's going to be 5, and then plus or minus, and then square root of b squared, which is 25, and then minus... It's going to be 4 times a times c, so 4 times 2 times negative 2 is negative 16. And then that's all over 2 times a, which is going to be 4. Okay, so this gives me that u is equal to 5 plus or minus radical 41 all over 4. Um, and then what I usually do here is I, I break this up because the plus or minus is convenient, but it kind of hides some things in this particular problem. So u is either um, 5 plus radical 41 over 4, or you could potentially be 5 minus radical 41 over 4. And then we have to remember, so the whole point of doing this was that u is actually sine of 3x. So now we have two trig equations that we want to try to solve. So we have either sine of 3x equals 5 plus radical 41 over 4, or sine of 3x equals 5 minus radical 41 over 4. So uh, let's see what we can do here. The first thing you want to do is you really want to think um, while you're solving these. So the problem is sine is a very limited function, right? We know that the sine of 3x has a particular range, so it's going to be stuck between negative 1 and 1. Um, and we need to think about that because 5 fourths by itself is already bigger than 1. And then I'm going to add something to it. So if I take 5 fourths and add something to it, guaranteed that is greater than 1. Um, and that means that sine of 3x can never equal that. So it's not possible for sine of 3x to equal this, um, which means that from per this particular value that we got, there aren't going to be any solutions. Um, so this uh, is actually kind of an extraneous equation that has shown up. So we don't have to worry about this part. We're actually done with this part. But that's the part that most people mess up. They just kind of, uh, they underthink the problem and they just kind of are, are going um, and they never consider the range of the trig function involved, and they run into that problem where they just get these extraneous solutions and they don't eliminate them. But we've already eliminated that, so let's deal with the other one. Uh, we should kind of pay attention though, right? Because we already found one thing was extraneous. What if this one's also? So now we have to deal with this radical 41 to figure out what's really happening. So what I typically do is I say 41, and I'll take the, the two perfect squares that are on either side of it. So uh, it's definitely bigger than 36, which is a perfect square. It's definitely less than 49, which is a perfect square, which means if I square root kind of across the board, I get 6 is less than radical 41 is less than 7. So I can actually use those to create a bound for this thing. So if I do 5 minus 7 over 4, that's definitely going to be less than 5 minus radical 41 over 4, which is in turn less than 5 minus 6 over 4. And then this, if we simplify it, gives me negative 1 half is less than uh, 5 minus radical 41 over 4, which is less than negative 1 fourth. Um, and that's good because that means we are definitely in the range, right? Because we know the range is from negative 1 to 1, and uh, all of these are actually between negative 1 and 0, so that's actually really important. So we also know that we're dealing with a negative value. So 5 minus radical 41 over 4 is negative, and that's important. So Let's take a look. So we have this equation. We just figured out that this thing is less than zero, which means we know which quadrants we're dealing with. So we have this, and sine is negative in quadrants three and four. So we're really only looking at quadrants three and four. And now we want to think about the reference angle, right? So there's a lot of things to be careful with in this problem. Um, so the reference angle that I'm going to use is, um, I like to just do the inverse trig function so inverse sine of the absolute value of the ratio. Um, and that's fine. Some people would rather actually find the absolute value, which in this case would just be radical 41 minus 5 over 4. But I'm going to keep using the absolute value thing. That's how I always do these problems. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. And so now we want to solve. So we know we're going to get a quadrant 3 and a quadrant 4 solution. So let's take a look at quadrant 3. 
So in quadrant three, we know that three x is going to be equal to, so quadrant three, you're gonna do pi plus the reference angle, so it's gonna be pi plus our reference angle is the inverse sine of the absolute value of blah, blah, blah. And then we wanna generalize at this point, so I'm gonna say plus two pi n. And then I know that n can be an element of the integers, or can only be an element of the integers, I guess I should say. And then this is easy enough to solve, so we're just gonna take it and divide everything by three, and it just takes a little while to write it. So we've got all of this, and then um, we need to divide everything by three to solve for x, and we still know that n is an element of the integers. So that's our quadrant three solution. Um, we also have to deal with quadrant four, right? Because that's the other place that sine can be negative. So in this case, we get three x equals and now um, there's kind of two options we can go with here. We can do two pi minus the reference angle, um, but two pi minus the reference angle is just coterminal to the negative of the reference angle. So I'm actually gonna do that because it's just less writing. So I'm gonna do negative of the reference angle and then generalize it, so plus two pi n. And then here, n can be an element of the integers. Some people don't write the n is an element of the integer part um, there. Uh, they save it till the very end. So once I've done that, I just have to go through and divide by three. So I'm gonna divide everything I see by three, make sure I write that n is an element of the integers. And so then the work is all over the place on this, so I'm gonna box my answers, and I get those two. All right, so um, that's what we've done. We used the quadratic formula. I turned it into an easier problem by doing u substitution, quadratic formula on that. After I did that, I had to really think about the range of what I was dealing with. And it turned out that I had an extraneous equation to solve, so I didn't even bother solving it, because it doesn't have any valid solutions. And then we just went ahead with the one equation that worked, solved it, these are our answers. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.